Okay, what's up guys? My name is Fancy here today. And today we are going to be talking about sugar. We're going to be talking about high fructose corn syrup. We're going to be talking about corn syrup. We're going to be talking about bleach sugar. We're going to be talking about uh, stevia, Splenda, as they call it. Natural sugar that comes from a leaf, which, again, that, that sounds very fishy. Doesn't it? Sugar that comes from a leaf when sugar is actually a plant. <laughs> okay, so now I think this video. Okay, yeah, this video will be, put, will be called "Sugar the Truth." So any type of any type of sugar, even when we're talking about dextrose monohydrate found in supplementations, it's a form of, of carbohydrate dextrose monohydrate. Again, it's highly concentrated in. There's a lot of it in supplementations. That's that's usually for the thing that you won't notice, but this is the main thing why you're gaining weight from supplementations, you're not getting a fast metabolism, and I'll explain this because there's so many carbohydrates, and usually if you have low metabolism, metabolism, and you're getting supplementations, as you as you have a low metabolism, there's so many carbohydrates, and your body cannot catch up, and in this this leads to body composition gain, leads to obesity, even weight gain just from having a protein bar, which it really, it, it really matters which one you get. It matters what you trust, what brand you trust, and the quality of it. If, if it's even high quality, if it's not high quality, you know, don't get it at all. But I'm going to be, to be dispelling the, wait, what's it called again? Dispelling the myth. Yes, I think that's for myth. Okay. Dispelling the myth of cane sugar, raw sugar, I'm going to be, brown sugar. And people say, you know, brown sugar, it's 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 healthier than, than than regular sugar. They say cane sugar because it's not bleached, that's healthier. The thing is, no matter what, I forgot to say dextrose monohydrate. When we're, we're talking about high fructose corn syrup, we're talking about corn syrup, we're talking about dextrose monohydrate. And when we're talking about cane sugar, when we're talking about sugar in the raw, when we're talking about stevia, splenda, whatever, whatever sugar name it's called, it's the every sugar is is exactly the same except for the natural sugar that you find in fruit and that you find in vegetables. Maybe like brown sugar, yeah, it, de it definitely definitely has way more benefits than white sugar, granulated sugar, sugar that's. That has a lot that has a lot of bleach in it. They bleach it, and that's how that's how it gets white. But sugar in the raw is basically brown, basically brown sugar. That's what that's what it is brown sugar. When, when we look at it, uh, might not be as as dark as it because again, there's there's more processing needed in brown sugar to get away from to to make sure to not call it cane sugar to call it sugar in the raw, but to instead call it brown sugar, and they're like. This is what you look it up right now if you want to look it up brown sugar It's it's not any means healthier than sugar. They, they both have no benefits. It, it's filled. It's filled with empty calories It's it's every everything the guy from corn syrup you look at that in Canned fruit you get and dried fruit you'll get that in Granola bars you look at that in soda you'll get high fructose corn syrup you look at that even in cereals, and all those kind of things that you, that you look at high fructose corn syrup in. You see it in many candies, say many many chocolate bars, to high fructose corn syrup. But the th same thing. So if you were to eat about a, a cup of, if you're about to eat, have a cup of brown sugar, that that'd be the same. It we could compare it to half a candy bar. It, it's there's no benefits at all. And they say again, the scientists have proven this. And, and they've, they've studied sugar, and the thing about sugar, glucose, as, as we know it, is that you have to consume so much brown sugar to even to even get one mineral, one vitamin, or minim, mineral, to get any nutritional value. You have to consume so much of it. And again, the people that are eating a lot of sugar, it's not good for you. Carbohydrate intake, especially as I heard about just in my basement about my metabolism video, as I, as I talked about it, is that when you have, 
when you have you know, an over the limit carbohydrate intake, the thing about it, especially if you have a low metabolism, the thing that, that's going to be happening, you're going to be retaining fat. You're going to be, you're not going to be burning off the calories. You're not going to be burning off the fat compared to somebody who has a high basal metabolic rate. Their their metabolism it works at a fast pace. They have a high metabolism, and the thing the similar from them is why they both burn off fat and calories is again as I talked about in my last video is because they're having bargain foods. They they don't have empty calories and sugar is full of empty calories. There's no nutritional value. You you could be malnourished simply off of eating sugar even for for five days a week. Even even if you have a high meta metabolism, good genetics, it, it doesn't matter. You you can still be a diabetic, skinny people with fast metabolisms and metabolisms to this point where they're stunted, and the muscle growth is stunted, and the vascularity is stunted, the fat percentages percentages are, are stunted, and with the muscle tone, it can only give into this one point because because again it's stunted. There's, there's so much trash that you consume in your body. And you can you can you can wait, but the thing is, it, it's going to catch up to you. Even if you have good genetics, you can still be. You can still have low blood sugar, high blood sugar. You can still have hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia. You can still develop high blood glucose level, low blood glucose level. You can develop diabetes. You can develop an unregulated blood glucose level. Again, when I talk about this, this is when the insulin, horm when the hormone insulin and when the hormone glucagon, they cannot regulate your blood glucose level, and this leads to low blood sugar, high blood sugar that's too low to be regulated or too high to be regulated. And there's so many carbohydrates. And the thing about these people with low metabolism, they're, they're indulging in carbohydrates. The thing I like to call carbohydrate sensitive, and I I say carbohydrate bloating is as I as what I would prefer to call it. Not carbohydrate loading because again it's not they're not burning off the calories they're not burning off the fat because they're gaining in fat because they're pushing their metabolism to to grow when they they don't they don't develop it gra gradually increasing their caloric intake and seeing how much food can get down how many calories can get down with high nutritional value and just basically developing upon that. Your, your caloric intake to build into a higher metabolism that again can burn calories it, it can also burn fat when we talk about that anyways fact of the matter so sugar there's no nutritional value to it you can simply develop you can develop premature death dying at any any time there's no given time that is set on premature death that, that you'll die it's simply if if you're eating foods that are high in saturated fats, high in saturated fats. If you're eating foods that are high in carbohydrates, you're eating foods that affect both your liver, both your heart, your whole entire body. If you're eating any sort of these degenerative non-nutrients, the, the thing that is going to happen is that you're going to develop cardiovascular diseases again the saturated fats, pulling saturated fats, lipids are pushing on your heart and making sure that circulation cannot happen with the blood vessels, giving oxygen to the muscles, gaining hypertrophy, gaining muscle fiber expansion. And we, we talk about cardiovascular diseases. We talk about heart attacks, risk of strokes. When we talk about you know, your arteries too, when, when your cholesterol is too high, you, your liver... Your liver makes its makes its own cholesterol, and because of this, it doesn't need any unnatural cholesterol. It doesn't need any unneeded cholesterol because it already makes the cholesterol that your body needs to, to make to make sure that the arteries are healthy. And when you give me so so much unnatural cholesterol, you're going to increase the chance of narrow arteries, going to increase the chance of strokes, going to increase the chance of heart attacks, cardiovascular deaths. You're going to increase the chances of LDL of bad cholesterol, of high cholesterol, 
cholesterol spike. So you want to increase the chance of all these things that I talk about on here. And as in this video, I just wanted to make this video to really make sure people understand sugar and, and that it has no positive effect, effect it has no positive effect on our body. It's just, it's full of negativity, not positivity. No positive effects, just negative effects. It increases our chances of developing low to high, even low high blood sugar. It makes, sure, it makes it so that the hormone insulin, the hormone glucogen, cannot regulate blood glucose level, leading to low to high blood sugar. And the thing we're going to be talking about, especially if... You have if you have way too many carbohydrates, you're going to be and say where you're when you're obese, you're overweight, you're gonna be getting a lot of fat, and you're not gonna be have a you're not gonna be having a high basal metabolic rate, you're not gonna be having muscular growth, you're not going to be having muscle fiber expansion, you're not gonna be having the catabolic breakdowns that are going to be releasing because you can't get energy from trashy fruit. You can't. You need nutrients. You need these nutrients, these vitamins, these minerals to be processed, to be broken down in the catabolic breakdown for them to release energy so your anabolism, so the muscle fibers, your basal metabolic rate can require the energy. Again, we require it requires the energy. And if you have a high basal metabolic rate, high basal metabolic rate, that you gradually in increase your hypercaloric intake. You, you increase it. You keep increasing it. And if you have... Broken foods, you don't have empty calories. And you, you're trying to be like like a skinny person that has many genetics. Face it, you don't have good genetics, so you need to do the best thing possible to even get a higher metabolism than what your metabolism is at right now. So you can stop gaining in fat, you can stop gaining in body composition, even for that reason. It's that you can get a high metabolism that it works faster at burning off calories and burning off fat. So you can stop having so much fat. You can stop gaining so much fat. You can stop having a high body composition level. So, so vascularity, it, vascularity can really show, and to make sure that muscle tone can really show, making sure that the fat it gets away from from the muscles, the like the abdominal structure. I we talk about the linear elbow that divides the transverse abdominis, and the rectus abdominis it divides the abs. It divides all the things in the, in the abdominal anatomy when, when we talk about that. And I, I just wanted to make this make sure make sure you guys get another video about sugar, and just know that, that at the end of the day it just increases your blood glucose level. Sugar, it's it's needed to a point. If you overdo it, then you're usually going to win. So obesity, you're going to be malnourished. You're not going to have the nutrients, micronutrients, microminerals, micronutrients. Because guess what? You're not getting them in the first place. You just eating foods that eating donuts. You eating. Bakery options, you're eating all these products that are processed, you're eating cookies, you're really eating all these processed foods with all these preservatives and artificial flavoring, flavorings and colors that you see in schools nowadays. It's really bad. They say that they they have a healthy plan, meal plan for every, every student that eats at lunch. They don't, they lie. And simply, if you were to eat at school, you can see the selection of spaghetti. Even when you get, you get a salad, okay, and lettuce it has no benefit. So I would usually go with something like spinach that can actually boost your metabolism. It can boost your immune system, especially if, and the the buildup of antioxidant enzymes, which again are proteins, and make it is it's going to be really affecting proteins. This is this. And how your muscle fibers are made, muscle fiber expansion, hypertrophy, the gain of muscle mass. As as we know about it as that. So I recommend spinach because it's high in folate, it's high in these minerals, it's high in these vitamins, it's high in potassium, copper, it's high in manganese, magnesium, folate, zinc, it's high in vitamin B6, an essential nutrient group of the vitamins, the Vitamin B family, vitamin B1, it has thiamine, it has vitamin B3, which is niacin. It has vitamin B6. It has all of these minerals. It has copper, magnesium, manganese. It has zinc. It has folate. It has selenium. It has iron. It's potassium. as calcium. Even at that high source of all these vitamins that your body, your body needs.
and I I I recommend spinach. I made I made the the spinach, bit the business idea of you know just making a company based off spinach, healthy for your cholesterol, it's healthy for your heart and and liver. You go you're going to be avoiding all the unneeded cholesterol that you you do not need. You don't need all this unnatural cholesterol. It's going to have very very low sodium spinach. And the thing about that we look at we look at chips again the high in fats. And spinach, it's a, these chips are not these chips are not fried. They're baked in the oven with a little bit of olive oil. Great source of oleic acids. When we, when we look at oleic acids, I'll make a video after this talking about oleic acids as, as we know it. But high in nuts, meats, oils, high in poultry and cheese. At that, oleic acids, omega nine fatty acids as we know it, and I. I hope I was I wasn't taking too long on this video to get this to get my point across. And sugar, just no matter what, it, it's still sugar. It's still comparable to processed foods. It's still compared to cereal. No matter if it's not high fructose corn syrup, it's if it's not as high. Even if it it's still corn syrup, it it's still going to be affecting your blood glucose level. Your chances of insulin sensitivity, insulin. Resistance, as as we know about it, is when the hormone insulin can, it cannot cannot regulate your blood glucose level, and this usually leads to hypoglycemia. This leads to hyperglycemia. This leads to high blood sugar, low blood sugar. It's